Hello to you all and welcome to the first of our Lenten series of Coffee with the Curate where each week we're going to explore a little bit of God's Word uh, and also what's in my mug. So I want to invite you to open up your Bibles, put your feet up and get your uh, favourite hot beverage if you're not off it for Lent of course and join me for this week's Coffee with the Curate. You are so welcome back to our series of Coffee with the Curate. Uh, it ha we've had a bit of a break from Christmas where uh, through the season of Advent uh, for a few weeks we uh, explored God's Word. And I want to invite you back into this rhythm over this season of Lent as we each week will come to, to look at God's Word and to explore what it might be saying to us uh, uh, for these particular times. As many of you know, I am a coffee lover and so it's really just an excuse for me to try new coffee as well. But I do want to uh, invite you to boil the kettle, make yourself a cup of tea or a cup of coffee. If you're off either of those things uh, over Lent, clearly I'm not going to be going off coffee over Lent. But if you are uh, taking up that discipline of fasting from tea or coffee, do sit with us open up your Bible, maybe pour yourself a glass of water or a soft drink and just take a few minutes uh, in your day uh, each week to, to explore scripture with us. Uh, so really how we go about this, before I get into looking at a passage of scripture, I want to tell you a little bit about what's in my mug. Uh, if you've been watching long term, you'll be familiar with uh, this mug, S on it, just in case I forget my name. And in my mug uh, today is a blend called Stronghold. Now the tasting notes for uh, this coffee tell me that I'll get notes of dark chocolate, fudge and dark sugar. So let's give this a whirl and see what we think. Now that is, uh, I think, the, the, the concept of strength that's contained in the name is probably quite adequate, adequate. That's a very strong cup of coffee. I usually take my coffee black with no sugar. That's, that's the way I prefer it. Um, and that's a very strong and dark cup of coffee, getting that, that, that kind of dark, dark, sugar, dark sugar and the dark chocolate there as well. I would say that's a perfect morning coffee and in fact it's probably a perfect coffee uh, for you if you are giving up something else other than coffee be it chocolate or whatever this could be the coffee that might get you through Lent it is such a strong rich deep cup of coffee that so was very enjoyable not something that you would necessarily want to have in the evening mind you but that would certainly in the morning uh, waking you up and get the, the old gears turning uh, no problem at all. Okay, let's move on to the main reason why we're here. For as much as I love coffee, I also love scripture. Uh, I love exploring scripture and, and sort of asking the question, what does this passage mean for us today? And today I want to start with a passage from the Psalms. I, I shared in our Ash Wednesday service yesterday uh, about how important and helpful the Psalms can be because the Psalms can cover that wide range of, of human experience and emotion that we go through. It's not just the kind of happy Psalms, but there's also challenging Psalms as well. And I want to read from Psalm number 147. I think it's such an important Psalm to us, especially as we enter into this season of preparation and penitence. So here are some verses from Psalm 147, beginning at verse 1. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant and fitting to praise him. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the exiles of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars and calls them each by name. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding has no limit. The Lord sustains the humble but casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with grateful praise. Make music to our God on the harp. He covers the sky with clouds. He supplies the earth with rain and makes grass grow on the hills. He provides food for the cattle and for the young ravens when they call. 
His pleasure is not in the strength of the horse, nor his delight in the legs of the warrior. The Lord delights in those who fear him, who put their hope in his unfailing love. Of course, we are now into this season of Lent, and it is an important part of the church's calendar. Of course, it's a season where many of us have given something up or we're fasting a particular thing. Uh, some might give up chocolate. Uh, some might give up television. There's a, a few poor, hardy souls who have made the decision to give up caffeine. Um, I'm not sure I could be one of them. Uh, but other, other of, others of us decide that we're, over this season of Lent, going to take up a discipline. We might decide that we're going to uh, go for a walk more often each day. Uh, we might decide that we're going to read more of our Bibles or there could be many other things that we decide to take on as a particular discipline over these uh, th these weeks of Lent. I've heard it said that it only takes a certain amount of time for something to become a habit. So it is a good time. I'm not sure how much I believe that, but it is a good time over these next few weeks to take up disciplines that maybe we haven't had the opportunity or the excuse to do in previous times, but to kind of set aside this time and say, do you know what? I want to try something new. I want to take up a new discipline like reading scripture more uh, or going for walks or whatever it might be. I want to take up the discipline of spending more time in God's presence. Very uh, helpful uh, and very important disciplines to try and, and have in our lives. But of course, Lent is not just a season of giving something up or taking something on. It is a significant season, like Advent, because not only does it point towards that important event, in the way Advent points towards Christmas, of course, Lent points us towards Easter. But Lent also encourages us to take time to prepare and to reflect, and in this case, to use uh, that mode of penitence to recognise that we are not perfect and to come before God who is perfect and to ask his help and his forgiveness. So very important time uh, in, the, in the Christian calendar, but a very important time for us who are disciples of Jesus Christ. I've often reflected that penitence can be a big word. It can be a word that we hear in church and sort of think to ourselves, what's that about? Um, but I've reflected that the penitence, the act of penitence, is about coming before God to say that we are sorry, to acknowledge that, that we do mess up, sometimes daily. And that can be a very liberating thing to do, to, to kind of shake off the shackles of having to be perfect because we're not perfect. And, and any, any attempt is just an act. We do make mistakes. We do mess up. Sometimes we even deliberately stray from the path that God has set for us. And so when our psalm talks about uh, fear of the Lord, Lord, fear of the Lord, I, I think that's really appropriate in this season. It is a bit like having a fear of the Lord as we come to say sorry. It's not like the fear of, of, of a dog who's afraid of being uh, smacked by its master, but rather it's, it's a respect for God because he is holy. It's a reverence for God. And yet in verse 11, there's another aspect of what we are encouraged to do as much as we're called to fear and respect and have reverence for God. We're also encouraged to put our hope in his unfailing love. And to me, that's the second element of penitence. The first element is to come and acknowledge before Almighty God that we do make mistakes, that we are sinners. But the second part is to come before God, sure in the knowledge that those who truly repent will be shown his mercy and his love. God calls us to penitence in this season, but every day, so that we might receive his forgiveness and be freed from the burden of sin through Jesus. So hope is a powerful thing. Both when we enter this season of penitence but also throughout our lives. When we place our hope in God, we find that although actual circumstances might not change, even though we're still in a lockdown, even though we're now a year into this uh, pandemic, even though many of us have 
had, had trials and suffered in many different ways over this last year, even despite all of that, when we place our hope in God, we find that our hearts can be lifted by that hope, lifted by the hope that God gives us, even in difficult times. We have a hope that God is very real, very sure and very steadfast. That hope will not die and that hope will not let us down because it's a well-placed hope. That hope will not fail or deny us. That hope will always be great enough for us and great enough for whatever problems we might be facing. And that hope will never be proven false because it's a hope in God. And so wherever you find yourself in life right now, whether you're struggling through this lockdown, whether this past year has just given you a beating, whether life has been good and kind to you and you're, you're finding that uh, there's wonderful surprises all around you, whatever life might be sending your way right now in this moment, in this season of Lent, I want to encourage you today, place your hope in God. I promise you, you won't be let down. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you today for your steadfastness. I thank you that even in the midst of trials and tribulations, you're there. I thank you, Lord, that even in our times of joy and celebration, you share in that with us. I thank you, Lord, that you reach out your hands and your arms of love to us and you call us in to be embraced by you. Today, Lord, in light of all that, in light of this season of Lent that we're entering into, we place our hope in you. For Jesus' sake. Amen. I want to thank you for joining with me today and as I said over this period of Lent we're going to have a, a weekly devotion so I do invite you uh, to join with me and engage with many of the different things that we're doing uh, on our parish social media accounts and, and on YouTube. There will be lots of uh, really encouraging things happening over this season of Lent so do get involved with that. If you have decided that you're going to take something out of your life, like chocolate or coffee, or you've decided that you want to take up a new discipline, let us know in the comments and tell us how you're getting on with that. We are only a day into Lent, but we do want to pray for and encourage those who are trying new things and setting aside old temptations, if we want to put it that way. Let us know, and in this week ahead, I really do pray that God will continue to encourage and bless you. Cheerio.